Hi, this is the comparison between the Pelican M805 in Blue Dunes finished with a fine nib to the Pelican M1005 in the Stresemann finished with a fine nib as well. They're both very classy looking pens and they both have piston fillers as mechanism. They both have the typical Pelican shaped clip and silver trim and the silver trimmed Pelican logos on the top as well, which is a bit hard to see due to the reflection they give off. In terms of size, Pelican 1005 is obviously slightly bigger, not only in terms of length, but in terms of girth as well. However, it is not as drastic of a difference in size as people make it out to be. Both the clips are st stiff, but very practical. has a typical pelican shaped clips and in terms of nib sections they are similar in that they flare out for a good hold and the M1005 has a bit more girth. The biggest difference between the two besides the price is the nib as the M1005 has a significantly bigger nib and different writing experience to go with that nib as well. They both have the silver trimmed nibs coated with rhodium to give the silver sheen. They both have the plastic feeds as well. I find the grip sections for both pens very comfortable. If you have smaller hands and are comfortable with slightly thicker pens, then you will be comfortable with the M1005 as well, as it is like around the same length as the Pycosme 23. If you prefer smaller pens or slimmer pens, then the M85 is a better size. For general comparisons to give a feel of the size, uh, I'm going to make a comparison to some other bigger pens. First, we have the Miki Yukara Royale. Then the Pali Custom Urushi, which is an actual oversized pen that I find very comfortable. Lamy Safari. Pi Custom 823, which is the same like this than 1005, and Visconti Homo Sapiens. As to give context to the size of the nibs, let's compare it to the Lime Safari. As you can see, M5 and especially M1005 are one of the larger nibs out there on the market, and they have unique writing experiences as well. They are very comfortable to hold and I really enjoy them. Both of these pens are piston fillers so I decided to show how to fill up a piston filler as I had recently cleaned this. All you do is unscrew the piston knob on the back of the then to the, to the left until you feel resistance. Then you insert the nib into the ink and close the piston knob to the right until it's fully closed then you're all set. M1005 has around 1.7 millimeters of ink capacity, whereas the M805 has around 1.5 millimeters. So there isn't a drastic difference in terms of ink capacity, but between the two, the M805 Blue Dunes finish is semi-transparent, so you can see the ink level rather easily. But the M1005 with the stripe patterns hard to see the ink level, but you can still see at the right light. Also. You can unscrew the nib section so it makes it a lot easier to clean as well for both of these pens. So that's one of the biggest advantages Pelican has over other manufacturers. Now let's get into the writing sample and experience comparison. I'll start off with the M805 Blue Dunes finish. M805 and M800 nibs are rather rigid but they're still very smooth. You don't, have, you don't have scratchy feedback or, or anything. You just don't have any bounce when writing to give the soft writing experience. There isn't much line variation due to the rigid nib as well. I found the M805 is in like a medium wetness, whereas the M1005 is a very juicy pen. Even though they're both supposed to be fine nibs, but as you can see in the writing sample, 
When it comes to pelicans, there isn't always consistency when it comes to nib size you choose. Even though I have fine nibs in both pens, the M1000 writes more like a Western medium, and even though I bought a fine nib. One of the things I like very much about Pelican M85 in my 100 nib is that even though it's a stiff nib, it's very more versatile compared to the M1005 because I use it to take notes fast and I'm not worried about it flexing out on me and damaging the nib accidentally like with the M1005 because it's a bouncier nib. So I usually use my M85 more for the notes for that reason because even though it's a rigid nib, it's still very smooth and a good writing experience. M1005 on the other, other hand is a very soft and it's smooth as well with a bit of feedback. You can easily get line variation with M1005. However, I want to be very clear this is not a flex nib. If you use it as a flex nib, then you will most likely damage the nib. If you like juicier nibs that are soft and smooth, then M1005 is perfect for you because it's on the wetter side. As you can see, the difference in line variation between the M85 and M1005, even though they're supposed to be fine nibs. The M1005 is still very comfortable to hold. Before purchasing this, I used to look at videos of reviews and everything, and people make this pen out to be this oversized pen but it is not as big as people think it is. If you're comfortable with Pilot Custom E23 in terms of length, then, then it's only a little bit more thicker in the, grip, the nib section. So it's not as a drastic of a difference. I feel like if you're, uh, if you're okay with the length of Pilot Custom E23, then you should be fine with the Pelican 1005. Granted, you like a little bit more thicker girt section. But both of these pens are very enjoyable to write with, and I'm glad I have them. Now let's get into the pros and cons of both bound pens. I have both as part of my personal collection, so obviously I like them enough to purchase them. Let's just start with ergon ergonomics. The M1005 is slightly thicker and bigger in terms of both length and girth, yet it's very comfortable for me. It is about the same height as the Pilot Custom E23, so if, you, if you're okay with the length of the Custom E23 and don't mind a little bit thicker nib section, then you should be comfortable with the M1005. Both pens are made out of resin, so they're rather light on their own, even when posted. If you have smaller hands and prefer slimmer and smaller pens, then I would think M85 is a great choice. You can take out the nibs on nib section, the nib units on both pens for easy cleaning. As you can see, in, in like, then you can see the ink level on both pens, especially in Blue Dim's finish. But it's a bit hard to see the ink level on the Stresmont finish due to the stripes. Now let's get into the writing experience differences. In my case, both M805 and M1005 are fine nibs, but as you can saw in the writing sample, they differ in the lines they put on paper. I found that sometimes you just gotta gamble if you on if you get the nib you choose when buying Pelican pens. What I mean is if you buy a fine nib, like in my case with my M1005, you expect a fine nib, but sometimes you get what's supposed to be fine nib that writes like a medium. That is the main con that I have when it comes to Pelican nibs, is that they're not always consistent with the nib you're supposed to get. In terms of Pelican M85's writing experience, I would recommend it if you take notes fast and aren't worried about accidentally spreading out the tines of the and 1005 when taking fast notes since it is a soft pen that feels flexy. I found that M85 is not as wet as the M1005, which is important when writing on regular paper or for notes or work, so you're not worried about bleed through. The M85 and M100 nibs are very smooth with barely any feedback, so the rigid nib doesn't make it unpleasant writing experience. I personally use the M85 more since I use it to take notes very fast 
This, per this works perfectly for that. Where is the M1005's fighting experience? I would recommend it if you like a soft nib that is smooth with slight feedback and if you're a light writer. If you think, if you like to write with pressure then this is a, this pen can be too wet sometimes and that can be problematic. If you're writing notes on just regular paper, however, if you like juice, if you, however, if you like juicy wet nibs, then this pen is perfect for you. I like using this pen often as well due to its soft feel, but I don't use it as much as the M85. The biggest con for both of these pens is the price. These are very expensive pens. Keep in mind, both of them are considered special editions, so they're a bit more expensive than the gold trim regular M800s and M1000s. The M805 in Blue Dunes finish retails for around $600, whereas M1000 in Stratomon finish retails for around $700. Founder pens are a luxury, so objectively speaking, they are not worth the price. So when buying these, they are worth however much you are willing to pay for a certain writing experience. In my experience, in my case, both pens were brand new and I paid around $340 for the M805, around $460 for the M1005. Personally, they were worth it for me at those price points for these specific editions. If I had to choose between the two, I would go with the M805 since they're, it's more versatile for my use for like taking fast notes and everything, but I enjoy both and everyone has different tastes. If you enjoyed the video, feel free to subscribe to the channel and thank you and have a great day.